Greetings, Terrarians Chaos here. I wanted to apologize for not getting the 200,000 subscriber milestone video out yet. After I completed the build and all of the recording, I had found out that the footage that I did record was corrupted and I'm unable to render it into a video. I spent several days on that project and I'm having to redo it all, so I will announce a new release date once the video is complete. To make up for that, today I'm here on my built of world and I'm going to be showing you all simple tips and tricks to improve your forest and landscaping. And if you're watching this video within the first few hours of its release, I'll also be streaming shortly after this video comes out. There is a link to my stream in the description below, so I hope to see you all there. And with that announcement out of the way, let's get straight into the tips. When you're landscaping a forest, it all starts with the ground. While you can build anywhere, if you see any natural decorations around where you want to build a forest, try and preserve it. These are not obtainable in Terraria without the use of mods or t-edit, and they look really good, especially in 1.4, so if you want to keep one in vanilla, you'll have to build around it. And it's important to note that you cannot block swap under them, as that's going to break them. So you'll see that unfortunately breaks it. We won't be able to convert this into grass, the ones that are under stone, even though it technically can spawn on top of both. Unfortunately, we can't just place stone under that and get it to be all stone. So you gotta work with what the world has to offer, even though you can use t-edit or mods to change that. But when it comes to landscaping your forest, I recommend starting off with a re relatively smooth terrain, but not completely flat. Once you've drawn out the shape of the terrain that you want within your forest, grab your hammer and start smoothing all of these square edges. They don't have to be perfectly smooth every time. You can leave some gaps. Um, I recommend doing some slopes and some halves. If you got long segments like that, you could do a couple of half slabs in a row, or you could just hammer things until things look a little bit less blocky. And once you've smoothed out this terrain, we're going to start varying the texture of the materials. Obviously, right now it's all dirt. If time was unpaused, grass would slowly grow over the top of all this. And I don't want the entire thing to be grass. I want some segments to have stone, some segments to be dirt only. So in terms of stone, like say we want a pocket of stone right here. We just want a small stone mound, right? So that can be a stone mound. Let's just increase this in height and we'll make that right here. And we'll even vary this in height a little bit more and make it a small, tiny hill of stone. So now that we have that, what we could do is carry this down into the ground. And I don't recommend doing just like one giant stone, like it makes it look like it's a boulder. You can make this look like it's buried by just varying how you blend the stone and the dirt in together. So if we just kind of go with random, almost root looking systems, it makes the stone look as if it's buried in without showing the entire rock. So we could just blend that in together. And taking this stone, we could actually add a bunch of variety to the dirt underground by just randomly placing small pockets of rocks into the dirt. And this adds a lot of detail to the build in the ground, which is usually a place that just goes ignored. It's usually just all dirt. You might occasionally see these spots of grass in there that look a little bit weird. Spots of stone make a lot more sense and look pretty appealing as well. But in addition to that stone, there's another option that we have. And those of you who have been on my channel for a long time will know that I absolutely love gray painted sandstone as a rock look. So that's what we're going to be doing with this little cliff face here, because obviously if this were dirt, it would look like it's just going to crumble and fall down. It doesn't look like it support itself. But if we grab some gray paint and some sandstone, we could place this right here and just make the rock face out of this material. And the reason why I like using this for cliff faces and for caverns is because of the texture of the stone. It's a little bit more smooth than this. It's not as rough and it's got these rounded edges, especially when you do a single one coming out like that. 
it makes it look like a stalactite coming out of the ceiling or a stalagmite on the floor. I think that's the way that they go. I might be reversing those names. I can't quite remember. But I love this material for cliffs and caves. Now, the reason you've got to be careful with it is because sandstone spreads the desert biome. Well, it doesn't spread. It converts the area into a desert if you have a thousand of these or more. So you got to be careful not to go beyond a thousand. Now, another thing that you'll be noticing with this are these dark lines in between the dirt and the sandstone. In the past, I enjoyed that line, but nowadays I really don't. So to get rid of that, you just need to take some more gray paint and some sand block and anywhere you have the dirt connecting with the sandstone, just place some sand. It blends them all together and it makes things look much more natural. And now that we have this rocky cliff face out of the way, the next thing that we're going to want to do is actually make this area dirt. I don't want grass to grow in here naturally, and it will if I place some grass right here. I do want grass up here and maybe a little bit of grass right there, but I don't want grass in this pit. I want it to stop right about there. And the way we can do that is with some brown paint and with some clay. Now, if I don't paint it, you could see that the clay blends in with the dirt. And it's going to be really useful because grass cannot grow on top of clay. In fact, no plants can grow on top of clay, including dye plants. You'll never get strange plants or blueberries or anything growing on top of this block. So it makes it a perfect substitute for dirt. All you have to do once you've placed that is paint it brown. Let me just place a couple more right here to get those blended. I'm gonna get rid of the grass right there because it's not working quite the way that I had hoped uh, with the blending. And then all we have to do is paint this brown and it's going to blend in very nicely with the dirt. There's going to be a slight outline wherever the clay and the dirt meet, but I think that's a relatively minor trade-off for the fact that this basically looks like dirt and grass will never grow on top of that. Now, speaking of grass, a great way to spread it is using the Staff of Regrowth. And actually, if you turn on your Smart Cursor, which makes the, the mouse cursor look a lot wider and it gives that yellow box, you could spread uh, the grass automatically just by holding down the button. It saves a lot of time and makes things much easier for you. In 1.3, you could also use the Staff of Regrowth to spread moss onto stone, which is another great detail that we could add to these forest stone areas uh, to vary the texture even more. But in 1.4, if you're playing on 1.4, you'll actually have to go underground and collect the moss. So you collect moss by using a paint scraper on top of tall moss and it has a chance to drop it. Now for a forest build like this, I recommend using the brown moss. Even though it doesn't really look brown, it gives a nice off green texture. And I think it's a perfect way to add some mossy stone to the build. Obviously you won't be able to use this on top of the sandstone cliff face. So if you want to make this out of stone instead, you could use the moss there. It's entirely up to you. And looking at this cliff face, I'm actually going to want to hang some vines from here, which means I want some grass on the ceiling. So I'm going to replace some of this stone with some more dirt and then place some grass on top of that. And of course, once we've got all of these gaps in there, we're going to have to grab some more gray paint, some more sand and just add, oop, that's brown paint. Just add that filler in between once again to make everything connect up as it was before. This is the point in landscaping where I try to get the natural plants growing in. So I'm going to be placing some acorns and getting the vines and tall grass to grow into the forest landscape. And the reason why I do this now is because the next step will be adding a bunch of background walls. And when I do that, those can prevent things like the uh, grass and these acorns from growing into their full plants. So I always try to do the natural plants first 
first and then add the background stuff. So I'm going to be placing some acorns. We also have some sakura saplings and some yellow willows. These will all depend, uh, what trees you use will depend on what kind of forest you're trying to create. Now, when it comes to growing these trees, there are some specific requirements. There cannot be a block on either side of the sapling within one tile, although it's a little funky. Um, it says on the wiki within one tile, so technically this could grow. However, this half block right here tends to prevent this sapling from growing. So in some cases, I might do something like this where I pick uh, the sapling's grow location to be somewhere relatively safe. Or on occasion, I might say want a tree right here, but I want this terrain to look the way it does. And we could just uh, temporarily adjust the terrain to allow that tree to grow by adding another block here, unshaping this block right there, and just spreading a little bit of grass on top of those. And once that tree grows, we can convert this hilltop back to the way it was. So there's two different ways that you can go about growing these trees by either temporarily adjusting the terrain or by picking a nice place to grow the tree itself. And in terms of grass, there's several ways that you could do it. Uh, you could grab a bunch of different seeds. So if we look here at seeds, there's all of these different flower colors. You could buy these from the Dryad and you just plant them. And every time you click, it'll grow through a different grass type. Now these will grow another length higher in the future, but you could just start placing these around or we could go into journey mode unpause time and we could even speed time up to get plants to grow faster if you want plants to grow even faster than that and trees as you just saw right here all you have to do is plop down a bed and sleep in it that will speed up time even more as you can see here it's only taking a few seconds for the day night cycle to go through all of these plants will grow a lot faster you can see we've got vines going we've got trees and grass popping up and it'll take relatively no time whatsoever to do this alternatively you could go into something like t-edit and do it manually and once all of the plants have grown in all of the trees have grown up and you're happy with the tree selection as you can see here i chopped down this tree because i didn't like it and it regrew um, once you're happy with all of that we're going to work on the background walls starting right over here with this cliff slash cave segment now i like to do a blend of stone walls of various different stone walls these are only available in 1.4 but if you use some gray paint and uh, we're going to be painting these automatically if you grab some worn stone wall and we can make a nice looking palette with this i'm just going to show you a sample right here and then we're going to do the same thing in here so some worn stone wall and then you grab some modeled stone wall and you just make a random pattern inside of that area and then some craggy stone just splash a little bit in there and this is really big for the outside edges if you place these along the edges it really really varies that texture a lot and if we want this to have vines in it we turn off the paint sprayer and we grab some ivy stone wall and this just makes it look like a little bit of foliage is growing within that area as well so that's going to be the block palette or the wall palette for this right here we're just going to quickly place some and in order to do this i'm going to follow the same shape that we have for the cave but it's going to come out a little bit different so it extends beyond that little cave a little bit more just so we could see that pop out and we're going to bring that down to here uh, maybe not so square on the edge right there and then we're just going to fill that area in i do recommend that you go with the general shape of your cave entrance because it makes more sense but you can do whatever you think looks best now you'll see whenever we place these walls here the vines stop moving and i think that's a good effect for inside of the cave because it makes it look like the further in you go, the less of a, a breeze is making it in there. But if you want a slight breeze, you could just hammer the first couple of blocks at the very top of the vine and get some airflow in there. I wouldn't recommend doing it all of the way into the cave 
just do it like right near the entrance maybe one right there and we can get those moving but this one's far enough in that it doesn't move and we're just going to now take the rest of the stone pellet and just go random go completely random with it because in nature having patterns is very rare and the more random that you have here the more nature uh, natural this is going to feel now with the craggy stone and it comes to doing the edges wherever you see a really square pattern try to throw this craggy stone in there because it's really going to vary the texture a lot and help out with that square blocky look and it's going to make things look rough still but kind of smoothed out a little bit and then we're just going to splash a little in here I uh, covered that hole and I'm going to have to break that block in there but we're just going to splash a little bit more in there for variety break that again and now we're going to grab some ivy stone wall with no paint and we're just going to place a little bit of vines growing in here on the background just to vary the texture a little bit more and there we've got a very nice looking uh, stone wall and we're gonna do something similar for this pit but instead of stone we're gonna be using three types of dirt now they don't blend as nicely together as the stone does you can see these blend pretty well together if we do the same thing with dirt we end up with these blocky edges so it's a little bit harder to work with but I do think that it still looks good so you can see we have these hard edges right there so here we have cracked dirt layered dirt and wavy dirt and we're just going to do the same sort of thing where we blend these in semi randomly together that's going to be the dirt palette and that's going to do the same thing down here that we did over there and so now we have a nice dirt wall texture here if you don't like the wall textures down here with the the blocky lines just use one type of dirt wall and that'll fix that problem and you could just leave it however you think looks best the other type of wall that we're going to be adding to this forest landscaping is a living leaf wall because these make for fantastic looking bushes now we don't necessarily need any paint for these and they'll look fantastic as you can see here but if you want to vary the color of them I recommend using a little bit of lime now I know we're talking about forest right now but this also looks fantastic in a jungle so just keep that in mind if you want to paint these lime it adds a little bit of a variety to this color here especially if you're going to be building custom trees and those custom trees don't have painted living leaf wall then you can paint the bushes to make them stand out apart from the custom trees even more now when it comes to doing the shape of the bush just think of how a bush looks in real life it's not going to be too tall it's not going to be blocky you're obviously not going to have a bush that just goes like this unless it's man shaped it's hand shaped to look like that naturally you wouldn't see anything like that so you could have some larger bushes like that or some small ones like this or just even a single block or a wall or two just do whatever you think looks best and you could vary these even more by making it into a flower bush well, let's make one right here this is a technique that I learned from cheesy panini and all we have to do is take a normal bush and let me get rid of this grass right here and then we're gonna take uh, some silk rope and some paint and we're just gonna place a couple of these spotted in here and the silk rope really looks like a nice flower uh, be careful not to connect them like that but it really does look like a flower so you could end up with a nice flower bush there so now we have natural foliage that we grew over time we have background foliage that we placed with background walls and these ropes over here and now we're just going to be placing some more dye plants and other sorts of uh, plants to add even more variety so as you can see here we have various types of strange plants and we have other types of dye plants and we're just going to place these around semi-randomly just wherever it looks good 
And so these red dye plants that I'm placing really look like a rose bush of sorts. And I like to place these wherever we want to see flowers, maybe like within this flower bush, just to add a little bit more texture to that. And I'll just throw a couple more of these around as well. Maybe we'll replace this one with the sky blue flower. This is another of the dye plants that I don't end up painting because it looks really good as it is. Now some of these other strange plants like this uh, purple one, they don't look too natural when they're unpainted um, so that purple kind of stands out if you like that go ahead and leave that but usually I end up painting these two types of strange plants lime I'm just gonna switch back and forth as I place these around randomly once we have these placed we're gonna start placing a few of the other dye plants including that blueberry bush and that yellow marigold now there's something interesting about those two dye plants they cannot be placed in front of a background wall so if I grab this blueberry bush and I try to place that right here you'll see I'm completely unable to same goes with that yellow marigold that's because when they grow naturally they don't grow in an area that can have background walls so they actually can't grow in front of a background wall if you just punch a hole in there though you could place the blueberry bush just fine and speaking of placing a hole in front of uh, the wall anywhere that we have grass that we want to be swaying in the wind because we're in 1.4 it looks fantastic we want these things to be moving in the wind it gives a lot of life to the build just take your hammer and hit it once right behind that grass and it's going to get things swaying in the wind and make things feel a lot more natural in addition to those dye plants, you could also place some acorns or saplings around to add even more texture to the plants as long as you place them in an area where they don't meet the requirements to grow, they won't grow into a full tree. But if you happen to place one in an area that's flat and wide enough for it to grow and you don't want a tree there, like say if we place the sapling here, there is a way that we can make that uh, prevent that from growing which I'll talk about in just a second but we're actually going to look at something else real quick before we move on to that topic and that's going to be these mushrooms I like to do red paint on top of the uh, green mushroom like this because it makes it look like a spotted red mushroom and you see these around forests they look fantastic and I just like adding this in in various different locations. And then with uh, either red paint or brown paint, I'll take the teal mushroom and do something similar. This one looks pretty good with the brown, although it also looks good as red uh, with red, just not as good as the green mushroom in my opinion. So with those mushrooms placed, I went a little bit out of order there with my train of thought. Um, we could show you how to prevent these trees from growing. And all we're going to be needing are actuators, and echo blocks so obviously this is not a technique that you'll be able to do unless you're in 1.4 and you're in hard mode post plantera but it is a very good looking technique we're going to turn the actuation device on we're going to just grab uh ice rod place an ice rod right there place an echo block right over that and let me just uh put on my specter goggles so we could see that and then we're going to actuate this so that we don't collide with it so now there's an invisible block here whenever you're uh, not wearing the goggles that will prevent that sapling from growing additionally if you don't want any grass growing in any spots or any flowers growing you could do the same thing by placing a row of echo blocks and then you actuate them and then underneath that, as you can see there, it got rid of all of that grass. That's not a problem. You just grab the staff of regrowth, replace that there, and now you won't have any grass growing on top of this. Of course, you won't be able to place anything here either unless you break the echo blocks, but that's going to be one way to keep areas grass free if you want them to be. The same thing goes with these vines. Right now, all of these have grown to the max length of 10. They're all the exact same height, and personally, I'm not a big fan of that. I like these to be varied in length. So what I will do is just grab even more echo block, 
and place these at varying different lengths, like so, so that these vines will never be the exact same length. Uh, none of these will be 10 blocks long except for this one right here, which I think is fine to have those on occasion. Actuate those so we don't collide with it. And just like that, we have these blocks preventing those vines from growing any longer. And again, without this Spectre Goggles, you'll never see it. You'll never collide with it. You won't even know it's there. So that's another way that we can use that to enhance. And there's only one other landscaping technique that I'm going to show you before we finish this build up for the day. And by one, I clearly meant two because I completely forgot to show you the orange blood root that can be a nice looking root hanging from a ceiling. Either you could paint it lime or you could paint it brown. It'll look great either way. And another good thing that you can hang from the ceiling, and I don't usually paint these though you can, is the Angry Dandelion Banner. That looks like a really nice hanging plant. Uh, it's obviously a little bit difficult to come across because it requires you defeating 50 Angry Dandelions and they only spawn during windy days in 1.4, but it is an amazing looking plant. And that's another detail that we could add right there. Now, let's go to that final detail for this forest. And that's gonna be right here in this dirt pit that I made. I want to place something that's gonna be rather dangerous in here actually, uh, because this can actually kill the player. But what we're gonna be doing are making some spiky brambles within this dirt area. So grabbing some brown paint, which we're going to be automatically painting with the Architect Gizmo pack and using the Living Mahogany Wand, we're just going to create some thorny brambles or roots or uh, some sort of thorn system coming out of here. And we're just going to make these come up randomly throughout the area. Now, obviously they don't blend in with the clay. Anywhere that we're going to have these connect, we're just going to place a little bit of dirt and then, in order to make them blend, what we're actually gonna have to do is throw in some grass, but to hide that grass, we're going to be painting it brown. Okay, so once you have all of these wooden spikes coming out of the ground placed, we're just going to slope them and make it smooth. And these are gonna look like thorns that are just jutting out of the ground you wouldn't want to walk in here because they're going to do a lot of damage to you and over all of these top parts we're actually going to be placing some wooden spikes that have been painted brown now you see they don't blend in with the wood yet but the block underneath them if you slope that to an angle it will blend in with that spike and give it a nice pointy tip that's how you're gonna get that bramble effect. You could even carry this even further, like maybe out to the side over here, or bring this down over there, and add some more spikes like this. You can get really detailed with these kinds of brambles, and I think it just adds a nice layer to the forest, especially in any area like this where it's a bunch of dirt, it's dug down, and you just want some more texture in that area. So with that out of the way, we have now completed all of the landscaping tips for your forest. They're all easy, simple to do, and should greatly enhance the way that your forests come together. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, be sure to leave a like and a comment and let me know if you'd like to see more landscaping tips, possibly for other biomes like the desert or even a, maybe something like a volcano landscape. Don't forget that I'm going to be live streaming pretty much right now if you're watching this at the time of release. So be sure to stop by, say hi. There's a link to that in the description below. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.